Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com. In this video, we're going to look at how to create a dynamic range using the index function. Now, the index function is a truly wonderful function. Very versatile, very powerful. One of the best in Excel. And I want to use it right now to create this dynamic range. So that if my formulas and my pivot tables and my charts are based on this dynamic range, they in turn are dynamic and will react to data that expands or contracts over time. Now I'm going to use this dynamic range in a defined name. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use the formulas tab and the define name button. But when I go into this button, the screen's going to be quite small. So I'm going to write the formula we need on the spreadsheet first, so you guys can see what I'm doing, and then we'll put it in the name after. And I've got a couple of examples for you here. I have this one dimensional list, and then I will demonstrate a two dimensional list of columns and rows to show these dynamic ranges. OK, now let's see this in action. So I'm going to click in a cell and let's start with my formula. So I'm going to type equals and I'm going to reference the first country as it is in this list. And I'm going to make that a fixed or absolute reference. So in this dynamic range, I need it to go from France, the first country in A2, down to whatever the last country is. Now, I know that the first one's in A2. I don't need anything dynamic there. I know that. After that, though, if I put in my uh, colon, let me go back and fix that range. I need to calculate what the end of that list is. And that is where I need index. So the index function, if you're new to this, can return the value or a reference of a cell. Now, the reference is what I am interested in. I need to find the last row of that column, of that list. So open in bracket, and it prompts me first for the array to check. Now that, and I'm just going to type this in, is column A. Look down column A. I want to find the bottom of that list. Comma, and then I have that question for a row num. What is your row number? Well, that's what I need to find out. And I'm going to use a function called count A to do that, which will count all the non-blank cells in a range. I can't use the normal count function because that only counts numbers, and these are not numbers. I need count A. Open bracket, where are your values? It's column A all over again. I'm just going to type this in. Close in bracket for count A. Close in bracket for index. So start from A2, fix reference, colon, and then the second bit is what index will return that reference. Count how many things are in column A, return that as a reference. You've got yourself a range. I'm now going to take a copy of that because ultimately I want this in my defined name. I'll just press escape to come out of there and go into my define name button, create a name for this list, such as countries, and paste my formula in the refers to box, and then click OK. And now I have that dynamic range. So to check it out, what I'm going to do is in this colored cell that you may have spotted on my spreadsheet, I'm going to set up a data validation list. And this list will be equal to countries, that dynamic range that I just created, that defined name. I'll click OK for that. And here we have a drop down list of France to Venezuela. So it's picking up the size of that range. And if indeed I was going to click and add another country in there, I realise that's not in order. <laughs> but if I press enter on Italy there, and go back to my list, Italy is added. My range is dynamic, and I've used that formula in a defined name. So it'll be easy for me to use in other formulas, let's say in pivot tables, in 
conditional formatting ranges wherever I may need it. So that is a one dimensional dynamic range using the index function. Okay, now I have another dynamic range example to show you. This is a two dimensional range and I want to use what I'm imagining is a very large table here. And in cell F2 for this example, I have a VLOOKUP function using that table of data. And I want this to be dynamic, both in the number of rows and also the number of columns. So once again, it's coming from a defined name. And once again, I'll start by typing my formula in a cell and I'll copy and paste it into the defined name area afterwards. Now, this time I'm beginning from cell A1. Once again, I start in my original point. The first one is cell A1. And I type in my colon, and the second part of the range is dynamic. I now need C6, the bottom right. So I'm going to put in my index function. And the first thing it asks me for is the array. Now, this is going to be a big difference from before. This time I'm putting dollar sign one, colon, dollar sign, 1048576. So I'm basically providing to it the entire sheet. And you can see Excel highlight that sheet behind me. 1048576 is how many rows are in the spreadsheet. So I'm giving it the entire range to look down. Previously, I provided it with kind of the entire column A, because I was looking down the column. Now I need everything. Comma. And the same goes here. Now I'm asked for the row number. And after that, the column number. Now I need both this time. So it's a count A function in each. This first one counting column A. Close bracket for that. Comma. And another one for the uh, number of columns. So count A. Dollar sign 1. Colon. Dollar sign 1. Close bracket for that count A. Close bracket again for index. So this is now a two dimensional version. The only difference really to before is that I've got another count A for the number of columns in addition to the number of rows previously. And I've also had to grab the entire range to look in. So if I take a copy of that formula, I'll escape this cell and go into define name. And I'm going to call this one sales because it is a kind of sales table, and paste that formula into the first two box and click OK. And now if I go into my VLOOKUP and change that static range I currently have to my sales defined name, it continues to work. And more importantly, if I was to add one at the bottom, let's add a pretend ID, and let's say that it's for running trainers. And then I made, say, £3,000. And then in my ID, if I put 142, it finds it. It continues to work £3,000, even though that was added to it before. This range name works and is dynamic, uh, adapting to additions and kind of subtractions from that range, the expand and contracting of a range of cells. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergargar.com.